Congressman Ellison, there were certainly trouble spots as well. For example, Mali. No doubt. Uh, I wanted to get your view on the importance of stabilizing Mali after the French pushed back the onslaught by AQIM, Al Qaeda yeah. in the Islamic Maghreb, spillover from the Libyan conflict. Um, but first, you know, elections are coming up in that country in July, and the United States has suspended diplomatic relations with Mali given the turmoil. Given that, how should the United States, in your view, support those elections, and how can they do that? Well, first of all, we can make it very clear to the Malian people that we support their right to select their leaders, to live in a free democratic society uh, where individual rights are, are respected. We can make it clear that that is the stance of the United States. And there are other ways to lend support, too. And I think that sharing information, uh, you know, doing all those things that we can do from a developmental standpoint are essential. The world can't have failed states, weak states that are uh, susceptible to domination by extremist authoritarian elements. It's in the whole continent of Africa and the world's interest to make sure that the real interests of the Malian people is reflected in their government. And I think the United States needs to be very clear on that. As you know, uh, the United States is providing a lot of humanitarian aid, mm -hmm. and there are drone bases in Niger to help combat the violent Extremists. extremism. Uh, but what other role do you think the United States has to play in terms of broader stabilization, economic development, fighting criminal networks? Yeah. Well, when it comes to economic stabilization, you cannot, you cannot give another country enough aid in order for it to become a middle-class country. They've got to find their way into commercial flows and streams. There are, ta there are services and products that the Malian people produce, and there are things that you know, we would like to probably trade with them about, and we've got to find a way to augment that. Now, that has to do with a lot of structures in society, not just production, but also corruption, also sh shipping, different kind of systems. We can be helpful with that to help them get their system in place so that they, they can have a platform to take it off. But in addition to that, you know, we've got to help make sure that they have, that we promote their security and recognize our joint security interests. Uh, and of course, as you mentioned, the humanitarian issue is quite, quite important. So uh, I think the United States needs to uh, continue to, to, to say that, you know, extremists, uh, transnational groups that would try to, by force, take over whole swaths of countries like Mali, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't have the approval of the world, including the United States. And we need to signal that in word and deed. What about signaling the importance of incorporating the Tuareg groups in the north, who have, do have legitimate grievances, but unfortunately joined up with these extremist forces in the hope of trying to you know, further well, their goals? Well, that's, that's a key element of what I'm referring to, which is that the Tuareg groups are part of the Malian scene. That's their, that's their country. They have legitimate concerns about being participation and making sure that there is a system of uh, federalism and decentralization that allows them to have a say-so over their lives, too, and not all of the decisions being made from, from the central location. But that's part of the democratization process, and that's something the United States can help with. I mean, we have a system where we have a federal government in Washington, but we have local governments around this country where local people are making decisions all the time. Of course, the Malians want the same thing. There's things that, you, that are important in local communities, and there's things that are important for the nation. And there should be different focus points of decision making that engage all of Mali's people, not just the folks in Bamako, but also the people uh, who are in the Tuareg groups as well. That's part, that is in fact, a lot of these extremist groups will take advantage of grievances, legitimate grievances. So I think the international community, including the United States, needs to be there to encourage the government to make sure that they don't shut anyone out because that is the fertile ground for the extremists.